Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Raber from Photo PXL, and I'm very honored to be sitting here today with my friend, Jody Grober. Honored. Oh, oh honored. Woo. And Jody, um, it's, a, it's a special time for Jody, and I'm going to cut right to the chase. Uh, he is probably... I'm a crier. Remember that. Well, we'll get you some Kleenex if okay. we need to. But um, for many, many years now, I've bought a lot of camera gear. As you all know, if you've read the articles about my gas problem, gear acquisition syndrome, just so you understand that, Jody has decided to retire from the camera industry. And why I have Jody sitting here is because he's kind of like a king in the industry. Everybody knows him. He's been at this for, what, 35, 37 years? You don't do that. He's doing the math in his head. So we'll, that's what 30, happens. That's why you retire. 30, when you, 30, when you 30, 30, maybe 30, 30 years. So not, 30, in, not including shooting time, you know, yeah, studio time, and lab time and stuff yeah. like that. Just, just in stores. So we're going to hear some stories uh, by Jody today and talk to him about his career and the changes and all the things that have happened in the, the industry. And uh, as you can see, we have a, uh, Hotel Tango bourbon ready to drink. Local sitting. bourbon. And uh, I know he's been eyeing this since we've been getting the camera set up, so we're going to get right into this. Here. You open it. Oh, man. He thinks I'm old. Mmm. <laughs> Let's pour this. You pour it. <laughs> we are um, maskless, but we're kind of a social distance apart. And uh, kind of working on the vaccines. And we I've are got ex mine. six foot one. Six foot one. Anyway, Jody, first off, cheers to having Thank a you. chance to sit down and talk to you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for being a career. friend over all these years. And cheers to a great afterlife. Thank you very much. It's scary. I said that and the pop <laughs> jumped off. The top jumped off the pot. I can't even talk. That's going to be just the way it goes today. <laughs> Brings his wife Mary Jane down here just to make sure that he behaves, and yeah, we're happy yeah. that she's here because there there is a bit of moderation as a result yeah. of that. And I also don't often behave when there's Mary Jane around. <laughs> oh, you, Jody's um, one of my better friends, and uh, since I moved here to Indianapolis, um, and there's a lot of things about Jody, and we're kind of trying to honor him and uh, ah. go a little bit about stuff. So what I want to hear, Jody, is like. You started your career and when? What year and how? What career? You started in photography. I was lost, the lost child without guidance. Ohio State had told me that I had emotional, social problems because I didn't know where my future lie. That's right after, just before I flunked out of Ohio State. And uh, I was a mediocre artist in high school and father's moving to Indianapolis from East, from uh, Columbus, Ohio, and he goes, there's an art school there, you got nothing else, just put an application in. Put an application in, and uh, that next year, I met Daryl Jones. Oh, the infamous Daryl Jones. I met Daryl Jones. And he's quite the character. And Oh, my God, if you don't know, I mean, and here's Daryl, and Daryl and I started an immediate, immediate friendship based on arguments about religion. We're both very adamant. Better than politics. Uh, uh, better than politics. He has a degree in comparative religions. And, and of course, the other students hated it because we would talk about religion all day long and not photography. But I did manage to learn 4 by 5 from him and darkroom from him. And, and I guess that's where it started. Uh, so you picked up your part. photography and you started taking pictures. And I started taking pictures. Did you try to make a living at photography? I did once. My career was based on my bills. Like the utility bills. And I need like to that. get a job. I went and got a job. I wasn't lucky enough like all the other men in my family who knew what they wanted to do, went and did it, and was great at it. I had nothing. And so I went 
the job took me. So I went to school, I learned photography. Photography is easy, it's chemistry and math, it's no problem. So I became a sculptor and a painter, which I think made my photography better. And, uh, and out of school, I gotta pay rent, I gotta eat. So uh, Mary Jane's bet, very, very good friend then, husband, had a studio. So that's when my making a living at this hap started. I went in to be his assistant. So him, me, and a, and a studio manager, and the three of us so had Mary a commercial Jane, studio. Were you, were, were, were you married or going out at that time? Mary Jane and I, as far as I know, are the longest together couple that met at Heron. Heron School of Art. That met at Heron. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. <laughs> January 17th. 1981, we had our first date in the brick building, Jack Moniger's apartment. Hi, Jack. 40 years ago. And we've not been married for those 40 years. So and she went through all of it. She went through my being an assistant for, for Kevin and then uh, opened up my own photo business for a while because there was no one in town doing professional business. And uh, we try, uh, my partner and I tried to get who he worked for, Rob Cumler, so, hey, Rob, open up a branch here, we'll work for you, and you'll own Indiana. He chose not to do it, so Kevin and I went, uh, so Denny and I went, you know what? So we tried it, and we were doing very well, and then uh, digital hit. And so we got to the 90s. We have no money, what am I gonna do? I mean, I don't, we, didn't, we were poor kids. We don't have 100, 200, 300,000 dollars to start buying Kodak $25,000 cameras. So uh, we just uh, locked it down and uh, went to look for jobs. Wow, so yeah. you ended up at Robert. That's right, that's, now that's where, 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 I, where did Rob come from? Rob, you know, Rob, just so those people know, is uh, you own a camera store, I forget what it was called. Still camera. does. He still does it's that? Still oh open. my God, he was still there, out of his house, I think. Out of a house, out a out big house. old creek, uh, it's funny. Rob and Wilma, they're, 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 they're characters. characters. They're our characters. Processors in the back driveway. They're characters. Junk in the garage. Mary, Mary Jane will remember this. One time in New York when we used to go to the photo shows, his wife Wilma actually elbowed me on the curb by the convention center with her elbow and pushed in front of me and took my taxi. Yeah, she was like that. <laughs> they would always, uh, you know, the, the photo industry has a lot of stories. You know, when you think about uh, all the characters in this industry, whether they be clients hey, you said you get a story out of me and you just did. Kind of you son of a, <laughs> damn, you are good. And what, what was I going to do? I can't have the money to go into phase one back in the day. And all well, that. I mean, taken a loan and gone out and tried <laughs> to found somebody to back you. No you, one's, no. You didn't want to take the risk. No, nah, no one would, it was. It, it was too. It was too big of a financial need for too great of a risk. I thought I wouldn't take. I wasn't. So you're not a risk taker. I wasn't going to do the same. It wasn't. It, it, I wasn't going to do the same thing that other people that I know did. Actually, people at Roberts. But you would have been probably who, damn good at it if you who, did. Who sell their own projections to themselves? <laughs> you, I mean, oh, now it's getting a little heady. That's you can't. And so many small businessmen do that. They, they sell themselves and it simply wasn't, there wasn't enough backing, there wasn't enough, it just, I didn't think it was there. I don't know, Jody, well, you know, it's all hindsight at this point, you know, but, and you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, but you know, you've got a lot of the characteristics that would have made you successful. Well, back time. then, you know, I was a different person back then. You were kind of like a loser? Mary Jane hadn't fixed me yet. Mary <laughs> Jane. Boy. It took Mary Jane 15 years to get me on the right track. And this was after, this was after. So how did she do that? What, what's a, a typical, what's a typical way of Mary Jane straightening out your, your, you your know, directions? Uh, you know, um, what are those, Honda makes them, you know, portable. Mopeds or? No, the portable battery packs. Oh yeah. That yeah. have two battery yeah, clips. I wonder if he was, did she take great joy in hitting the switch? <laughs> so she disciplined you. She guided me. She guided me. She guided you in that the right direction. I was, I'm a Brooklynite. Oh, really? And in, in my family, you were taught that no one outside of New York has a brain. No, I'm not. Well, it's, I'm, it's its own little world. I'm not kidding. My yeah. mother and sister still to this day. 
they've they've told Mary Jane and I that as recently as three years ago. I mean, really, that's the that's who I was. That's who I was. So let me, let's now I'm just sweet. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that at all. What I like to tell people, especially now that I'm leaving, and so many people want to know what to do, who do I talk to. I try to tell them what I try to instill in my team. And it's a very simple thing. You work really hard, you always tell the truth, and you be kind. But I, I would this, take it one step further from being, and having been a customer of yours, you go to bat for your customer. Well, and you, you go to the end of the earth to find the customer, not only the, the product, but sometimes you know, the price. And I know you've, you've done some big deals. Okay, I'm leaving so I can say this now. There are way more times than Bruce would like to know when I talk to customer out of buying something. Because <laughs> it was the wrong product. Well, I think any good salesman should try to give the customer the well, product that's I, right I always view needs. us not as salespeople. We're technical advisors. And it's a very, very different thing. It's a very, very different thing. I try to see what the customer is looking to get at where they want to go and find the right solution. It's but, not, hey, we have 10 of these. Part of what makes that, makes you special to the George Tietermans, to the, you know, the Associated Press and you know, a number of other organizations is you. They buy from Roberts because of you. How did you develop these relationships? These, this is, I think, the strongest thing that people will be know. missing along the way and why you still have a good team. You have relationship skills. Know. You know what it might be? As <laughs> so I look at Mary Jane. You know what I sometimes think it might be? I was a middle child. Okay? Yeah. Mary Jane lives in the second house she ever lived in, five miles away from the first house she ever lived in. I can't count how many houses I've lived in or cities or schools I've went to. I can go into a room and be fine. Might not enjoy it, but I can do that. You have to learn how to survive as a middle child. Maybe that's psycho babble, but it's not I lived it. I can understand that where it's, it's yeah, it. and that's carried through your whole life. As long as you mix that with the fact that relations are important and people are important, and you're not, not you, you, yeah. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> Probably did. And, and tell the truth and be nice. You, but you, you've got a, a skill. I, I know I've talked to a number of people, and what they say is, oh, you got to talk to my guy at Roberts, Jody. You know, Call Jody. Jody will get you anything. If you need something, Jody's there to find it to you. I know I've spent some time talking to George Tienerman. Let's just use him as an George. example. You only talk about George because he's the only one to ever shoot NASCAR with Phase 1. Okay. Yeah, okay. but he took me with him. <laughs> and, and, and he's just the nicest guy there there is. I mean, even... Even, I have a terrible memory, but I remember this one image on a wide bank of a car and the thing uh, that he shot. I just remember that image. But, you know, he's I taken a George. phase to Japan and other places. You don't know Olympics. George. Everyone doesn't know George. Retired George. Just had major heart surgery or some sort. Call him up just to see how he's doing. George is this tall. Marine. Yeah, Marine, his, Marine his, to his, the core. His wife answers the phone. It's been like two days or something. Yeah, 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 it's George there. I want to see how he's doing. What's up? Jody, can you just do something? He's on the roof with the hose, hosing off the mold, the algae. <laughs> <laughs> Two days after heart surgery. <laughs> Love you, George. Dude. Do you know he is the one that started Roberts in the sports business? No, so tell me about that. How do you do it again? You son of a... Bill Pekela and Mike Phillips. You might not know Mike Phillips. I don't know Mike. Mike killed himself smoking cigarettes. A nice man. He was an NPS guy in the, back in the day. Really, really lovely man. They were at uh, Pan Am Plaza for the Pan Am Games. So, God, where, where, where the hell did you live in Pan Am Games? What was that? Pan Am? Where did you live? 82, 83, 19. Lou, you know when the Pan Am Games were? Long time ago. In <laughs> Indiana, you know, they were in Indianapolis. And... NPS had a booth and stuff, and George needed something. And so uh, Mike and, and uh, Bill said, hey, there's a good place, there's a new place, just opened up as a Nikon dealer. It's a factory showroom, uh, what do they call them? 
Like, like service merchandise, what was it called? Merchandise showroom? Merchandise or? showroom, yeah. Yes. Where you go and like you fill out a piece of paper stamps. and you give it to someone and they go and get it and bring it back. That's what we were. That's all we were. And uh, George came in. He walked down this block. It was a block away and he met Bruce Quitney. And uh, uh, Bruce, who had a lot to do with my job being possible, and uh, introduced themselves. And uh, he was with Sports Illustrated and that was, that was the beginning. Bruce knew what to do with that introduction and that grew so you know George calls Phil and I hey Phil Thanks. Phil and I drop what we're doing so how did he end up helping you get into he, you must he, he was responsible somewhat for your career right I mean, Phil, was, George George well George got Roberts hooked up with Sports Illustrated and Bruce Quitney and George and at and, that time, Sports Illustrated had its own staff of photographers. Oh, yeah, a huge staff. Yeah. And that grew into quite, quite, it, that actually grew Roberts into what it became. So that was kind of responsible. So let's, let's go back to talk about getting your job at Roberts. I needed a job. <laughs> I hope I remember this right. I'm not very good. I needed a job. And Bruce told me that he ex Bruce Pullman told me he expected Bruce Quitney to leave soon. Why don't you come work at the store and when Bruce leaves, we'll figure something out. So I did that. I was working at the store and Bruce never left. Hmm. So, hmm, Bruce never left and this is going on as was quite a number of years. And I said, well, I'm not sure if this is right for me. Uh, I'm going to try something. And I went into a, commercial studio with a friend of mine, Rob Banio. Okay. Anyone in Indianapolis knows Rob Banio. He's a super guy. He's been shooting in Indy for forever and ever and ever. Hi, Rob. And, uh, and we had a blast. We did a lot of stuff. And it was very difficult for me. I could, I could handle the days when we had 10 hours of work. I couldn't handle the days when we didn't have work. You know, because I was... I would do anything Rob told me to. I was sort of working with Rob. We were sort of partners. It was a funny situation. I could get my own work. But I just, I didn't have the, the character, the personality for a self-employed photographer because I couldn't do that week when no one called. Ugh, made me crazy. But Rob, I did a lot of work for Rob. We had a blast. And that lasted a few years. Then I went to work for Rob Baniot. No, for that was Rob for a uh, Fiji in a lab in Indianapolis, and uh, did that for a while. Didn't enjoy that very much, and then all of a sudden, I uh, had some problems with that and walked on that job, personal problems, and went back to Bruce and said, "Bruce, give me some Christmas business, just on the floor. I don't know what I want to do." Yeah, Jody, too. Bruce and I were always, we're always close, always will be. Bruce is one of those nice oh, guys that everybody gets along oh, with. Oh, he's, he's special. So, oh, come on. Absolutely. Come on. No, 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 no problem at all. A few months later, finds out Bruce Quitney's leaving. Ah, you timed that right. It was Beshert. Yeah. It was uh, Beshert. It was written. <clears throat> yep. yep. And, uh, and uh, that, then I moved into to Christie's Dismay. Bruce's assistant, I moved into his seat and uh, kept growing the business. So, yeah, I changed the way we did business. But did that come as something that you knew the way you wanted to do it, or did it grow into its own style? I think it was in me. You knew how people wanted to be treated. Yeah, yeah. I can't treat people badly. I can't lie. I don't want, I just don't. I just, I just don't. You're ugly as shit. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that. Out I can't of... lie. No, you're adorable. <laughs> I'm adorable now. You're adorable. I hate that word. You're adorable. <laughs> and, and it's hard sometimes because, and the nice thing is that Bruce Pullman was always a foil, which is good, and you need that because you need to know what's in what's in the store and what we have to do and the numbers you have to. So it's it's good to have that we are. It's not a bad thing to have that counterpoint. It's a good thing. But the store, That's why Bruce and I work so well together. And you're, you're quite fortunate to be able to do that because well, there's the industry, uh, camera sales, 
and remodel this for me if it, it has to be, you know, rethought out. At one time, there was mom and pop camera stores all over the place. There was the camera shops. There was Willoughby's. You know, there was hundreds of different camera stores with multiple branches doing processing. Are, are you a member of Bygone Camera? No. Oh, I am. Oh, yeah, oh. bygone, huh? Bygone camera. Well, now you're going to be bygone anyway. Yeah, so. bygone. Yeah. <laughs> so what what happened to this industry? I mean, uh, these guys started going away by the, by the tons of them. I mean, they were caught in illegal schemes, buying black market, gray market. There was the Bogosians from King of Prussia had the camera store, and his brother had a camera store. One was a camera store, Inc. One was just a camera store. And they were like two brothers, you know, like two cats in a bag fighting. I mean, I've, I've seen this throughout the industry. You got that, and then B&H all of a sudden comes in. And before B&H, there was Spiratone. Remember Spiratone? I, rem I remember going with my partner when I had our little camera store, Gamma Group. Guys we were buying from, we didn't know anything. We were naive kids. And we go to see him. We got the address, and we're going, and we, we're in Brooklyn. We're in a neighborhood in Brooklyn, actually not far from where I, my parents grew up. And we go to a house, and we go down a slope, and a back sloping driveway into a back basement door and down some steps and there's who where we've been buying from. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was quite the quite a different time. And then of course B and H shows up, um, you know, and they're not that old of a company, really. Yeah. You know, um Spiratone went out and uh all these companies changed. But somehow or other you know, with Roberts, and let's go back a little bit. Roberts was a merchandise company. I used to call it like the green green stamps or something. It's, you know. it's like where Phil or, used or to, where you used to work. Best. Service merchandise. Yeah, service, service merchandise. Service, it was a service merchandise, a privately owned, and the people that owned it, the Schultz brothers, didn't own it. Uh, Bruce's parents owned it. Yeah. And and the Schultzes, Schultzes, I think that's who they were, would yeah. make your catalog for you yeah. and you pay them and you get the catalog and people can look through just like service merchandise catalog and then you buy your product from their warehouse. So Roberts didn't start off as a camera store. It, no, I mean, no. I remember even walking in when I no, moved here in 2001. It, it was this, yeah, it was, the camera um, portion. You know, watches along the one side, pen knives, um, all yeah. sorts of crazy things. And the cameras were in the back, but somehow or other the cameras started moving mm -hmm. forward. And I remember going in the basement of that place and it was like, oh my God. I mean, was, I've never, how, how you ever got all that um, stuff out of that place in, in so the end? My, my good friend, Bob Carey, um, provost, uh, no, is he dean? Something of Gardner Webb Photojournalism School, Baptist University. They, they had their convention once in Indianapolis. So he has all of these Baptist students come into the store and he gets them all in front of the store. He goes, okay, everyone come in here. Okay, get ready, we're gonna go in line, and we're going to hell. I went, what are you saying? We're going to Robert's basement, and this is true hell and damnation, and you're gonna want everything in this room. So keep your hands to yourself and let's go. And he marched them all into the basement you're talking about. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious, it was great. I mean, it was great when you had the tour of the basement. You know? yeah. It was like uh, quite the place. But now Robert's changed. I mean, eventually they just completely moved over from everything else into cameras. What was the reason for doing that? It's where the money was. Yeah. Money. Hummels just didn't do it anymore. Hummels. <laughs> <laughs> Who's buying, you know. Uh, the big shops were doing a better job of toaster ovens and TVs. We got back into TVs a few times, but now it's a disaster. I mean, those big stores, those, they were, but they couldn't do a good job of photography because it was too technical. But meanwhile- and that's how little companies like ours and the little stores could make it because they had people who could help you. Because I remember you were out front a lot too. Um, and eventually you went upstairs when you got to the new place, but you know, you always could find you and you know, get stuff taken care of and- Well, the until the buildings. last few years at the other store, the old store, um, Christy, Ed and I did an ungodly amount of business through the little tiny room on the first floor. It was probably eight by 18. Yeah. Three of us on our desks in that room. And we were probably at one point maybe doing, the three of us were maybe doing 12 million out of that room. <laughs> I don't know how we did it. We were, we were, it was insane. Did you ever question your, your being there? Like all that stuff, all that hard work and where you were going and were you just happy being there every day? An, uh, 
a, nose, a ring through my nose. My career took me where I had to go. I had no, never made a decision, just went where well, it pulled me. Was Mary Jane happy with the progress you were making? Did she think you finally hit, hit you know, the, the right track? Did you? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Now, Mary Jane worked for us back then. Oh, I didn't know that. She worked for herself. Okay. But she did all our newspaper ads, Ooh. all our catalogs, except some of the co the covers. I've posted some of the covers on uh, on Facebook, the old covers that I designed. Oh, my God, they're funny. They're awful. Oh, my God, Mary Jane. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, those were the days. But she did a lot of that. She did a... a, a a lot of the advertising for So how, how did you do moving to the digital realm? That was hard, just like video now is hard, but I was younger and the math was still the same. What do you mean, the math? The math of digital photography is no different than the math of analog photography. But it's a whole crazy, a lot more equipment needed, different pricing, people aren't buying, autofocus, you know, dynamic range. You had a whole new set of terminologies and specifications you had to know no. to be able to sell the product. Film still had dynamic range. Still the same f-stops, still the same shutter speeds. I mean, it was close enough that it was just another way of doing the same thing. While you've been at Roberts, you, you obviously made some close friends. And I think one of the things... Those are the people I'm gonna miss. Yeah. That's, there's just so many, I can't even call them all. I mean, there's just so many people that, some of them I talk to once a year, but it's like, I, you know, it's that call. Oh, it's the call of that year. And forget people at work. I mean, my team, I, I, you know. Well, your team, but you know, you, came, you became you know. pretty close to Phil, who's in our On the Rock series all the time, yeah. too. Well, I'm gonna, and, I'll, and I'll never see him again after the you know, 18th. It's supposed to be like leaving camp and singing Kumbaya. I'll never see him again. Never see him. So Kumbaya, or well, should we do a Kumbaya? Kumbaya. Kumbaya. <laughs> There, there's a story you told me about why, you know, and the, the thing that happens with us in our careers is that one day um, we decide to leave. I, I've left several companies that I've been with and, you know, now the only one I can leave is mine and I won't have anything to do with that. So tell me what happened. When, is what, Deborah firing you? <laughs> we'll find out the day I come home and the keys don't work. <laughs> well, you know, at one point you decide is what you do during the day, for what you do it for, what you get from it, what you glean from it, the joy you have from it, how does that balance with the joy you would have being at home, being with Mary Jane, realizing that the, the two generations of men in my family died at 70, at 60, 72, and I'm 64, I have eight years, and you balance that. Okay. And yeah, at one point, and you balance it as you get older, as, as you're probably thinking now, everyone at the RH starts thinking is, when do you do this? And you, you put it on a scale and you think, when is this gonna be? And life turns on a dime. It does these days. It turns on a dime. And uh, I would much rather make Mary Jane miserable for eight years than keep working. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. Yeah. Oh, how, 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 I hope she had some input into this. <laughs> so, so I go to Meredith and I tell Meredith, owner of Roberts, my boss, I go, Meredith, when you give me the last check, give it to me in cash, please. I'm whispering because that's how I told her. Give it to me in cash and under the table so Mary Jane doesn't know. So, and she goes, Mary Jane already knows. I told her how much it is, and she already arranged when she's sick of you that you can come back to work. <laughs> That's how that goes. <laughs> well, have you thought about your last day? I mean, it's... I, you know I, what I thought of doing? Here, I'm gonna ruin my plan. I thought of not showing up. <laughs> I call him sick. Cut, no, not show up. You know, let everyone have the donuts. <laughs> And this is all you get for your last days, a big and box me. of donuts on yes, the table. This is perfect. Jody is a dickhead. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about where you're going to go. I mean, you know, this, this is, uh, I mean, I, I can't under, because it's never going to happen to me. I'm never going to be able to just like one day, you know, be working at a job like a policeman or a fireman or um, a camera sales guy like yourself and just go, okay, well, 
4.30 this afternoon, I'm walking out the door and I'm, I'm well, done. I'm volunteering right now to be your paid valet for Rockhopper. Oh, you are? Yeah. You want to want to carry my bags? I'll carry your bags. I'll push your wheelchair. <laughs> you have to fight Michael get for that. You have to learn video. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Never mind. But so you just walk out, and so like you go to bed that night, and you go. It's scary as sh Oh, yeah, God, it's scary. Gonna, You're not going to ride your bike to work. You're not going to have to get scary. up. You don't have to answer the phone anymore. Uh, it's like. Everything, I mean, because every day, I mean, I know what it's like if I just stop cold turkey, and that's what you're going to do. I mean, cut it off. Kevin, I am and was very scared. It's very, very frightening. Yeah, and I talked I to it. Mary Jane's brother, who's retired three times. He's a professional retirer. A professional retirer. <laughs> his partner, his husband, Scott, who's retired, and uh -huh. Jan Irvin, who's retired. I talked to them at great length. Very serious conversations. What's it like? And caulk me out of this. And we really, I, I used a lot of people. And it's hard. It's scary. My brother's, my dear brother in Alaska's wife just decided not to retire. And he's devastated because he's retired. He's, oh, she's going back to work. And I texted him today. I said, so Tess is quitting, quitting. What a quitter. Well, some of your fellow people that I you work that with called you a quitter. I thought that was better than just not laughing. I think that, I thought yeah. that was cute. You could have laughed at that. I <laughs> you know, the vision of our garden needs to be accomplished. Yeah, you have you got a great the, garden. and, and uh, you, you I'm a woodworker by training. Oh, I didn't know you were a woodworker. You didn't no. know that? No, you no. You know I have a master's I look around degree at the wood in sculpture? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, you know most know. of the things in my, a lot of the furniture in my house I made. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't think you did. So you're quite I'll confident you're going to be pretty happy. I have 150,000 images that have no metadata. It's not worth doing the metadata. I, 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 well, Did we, he just say my images aren't worth <laughs> no, my, editing? I'm wait, not, wait. You, you can what? edit, Jody, but don't so you start. Well, maybe I should put a keyword on here in case I die. <laughs> Somebody will know what it is. Duck flying in sky. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Well, Thurs, Thursday, to... Thursday morning, the 19th, will be very, very, very scary. Do you want to go walk the mall together? You're going to become a mall walker? And walk the river. Get oh, your, walk bring the river, your camera but, you know, over and walk you know, the river. I'm just afraid we, you. We well, have eagles. Oh, one well, of the first things I told Deborah when you were retired, I said, Jesus, I hope he doesn't become a mall walker. No, no, I walk the river, <laughs> baby. With my, with my new shoes. Take your camera with you every day, whether, you know, a small I camera do. or something, because there's always something along the way. And I plan to call you up and... Maybe we can do a bunch of videos together, but you know, I go out shooting well, and try new stuff out. And I will go and, shoot with you anytime you wish. That'll be fun because we can just hop in the truck and Absolutely. take off and pitch at each other the whole day. I would. I am at your service. Um, I think when people in this industry, and there are not too many people that make it through thirty plus years like you have, dealing with people day in and day out in the photography side of things, you know, that are actually still nice to people. I was humbled when I posted my letter on Facebook. I figured a few people would say, have a good time. I was genuinely humbled by the response. I could, I did not know. Maybe that's part of what makes me interesting to people. I did not know, I did not care. It, it never occurred to me. But the response was, it's no words, it's, it's beautiful, it was, um, Difficult. Well, it, I, I can only imagine how difficult it could be, um, because I know how I felt when I read that and said, "I'm not going to have Jody to call anymore." I'm going to Flint. I'm going to call Phil now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm going to miss you there, because I would every time I would walk in the store, I know I could come upstairs and we would just sit down. You'd always find time. Um, I'd always listen to you answer the phone and haggle something out or yell at somebody in the back room to take care of this and do that. So obviously you had a good team, you knew how to delegate, um, but you knew how to relate. And you know, can do all the delegating you want, but the relating part, not only to the customers, but your fellow employees, okay, stop. shines through. Okay, stop. So. Can we hug? I don't think that's allowed right now. We're social distancing. Fuck. Oh, I'll get plenty soon. You'll get your shot soon. Yeah, I've signed up. Today. I have my one. I got signed up today. Good. Good. Well, good. Anyway, look. Much love, son. Cheers, buddy. Really appreciate everything. To a good afterlife. You're, you'll do fine, and you'll have fun. 
But I don't want to catch you at the mall walking. No, I won't walk in the mall. All right. Sounds like a plan. Jody Grover is a legend. He is a legend in my mind and uh, for many, many people that in are my own mind. <laughs> Wanted to elevate it up a little bit. <laughs> but we'll miss him. Roberts will miss him. Um, he won't soon be forgotten. And, um, you know, if he can make it to 82 or 72. Se 72. 72. Yeah. What happens if you break that record and go like another 20 years? Are you going to be sad? Mary Jane might be sad. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little episode. Uh, Jody deserves all the honor, and it's not every day you find somebody that's been doing what Jody's been doing all these years. Do you think years. I should have put beads on my beard for this? Later. Part of your retirement. Okay. You know, Hiawatha and all that <laughs> other stuff that'll come along with the retirement. So anyway, everybody, see you on Photo PXL, where we're every day, well, we're every... Day. That's the boy, <laughs> ya ha. Ho, ho, ka, ka. I'll see you on Photo PXL, where we're sometimes really trying hard to enhance your vision. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Judy.